In this video I'm going to show you how to use Camtasia Studio to capture video lessons. Some of the tools I'm using, Camtasia Studio, so I can take you along with me as I capture a lesson. I'm also using Active Inspire, which is a software from Promethean, which you can download for free from Promethean Planet. And then the other thing that I'm using is Doceri Desktop. I'm actually recording through my iPad what's on my screen so that I can record a recording of me recording. Um, how's that metacognition for you? So, first of all, I'm going to uh, go into my Active Inspire. That's where I have my slideshow ready. You'll notice that I have in my slides, I have a little frame here, and uh, that, that will be the frame for my video. And on the right side, I have other things that I'm going to drag into the video. I've got a little script for myself. Normally I don't prep this much for a video, but for the purposes of showing you how to capture, I, I did put quite a bit of work into my prep, even though I normally kind of fly by the seat of my pants and do post-production editing, because I'm pretty good at it. However, the more you prep, the less you edit. So if you're not really quick at editing, editing can be one of the biggest time sinks in creating videos. So if you're quicker at making presentations than you are at editing, it might suit you better to put a little bit more time prepping your presentations to give you a guide so that you can do it in one take and not have to do as much editing. So the second thing that we're going to use is we're going to use Camtasia Studio. And to start recording, you'll just click Record the Screen up in the top left it will open up the screen recorder and you'll notice that it has a frame which I'm going to set my frame here to fit the frame that I put in my presentation software so that my frame fits exactly what I want the video to capture and I still have the rest of my screen uh, to use the tools to read my notes, any of those other things that I want to do. Here we go, recording me recording something. It's kind of like that thing where you take a picture of somebody taking a picture of you. Weird. In this video we're going to talk about access strategies. One of the biggest concerns with the flipped classroom is how students will access the content. With low income and rural student demographics, it can be a challenge to use the internet as the only source of content delivery. Here are some strategies that can help you bring success to all students. Computer lab availability. Students can access flipped content easily by allowing them time in computer labs before and after school or during study hall periods. Many students who do not have internet at home may have personal devices such as iPods or smartphones. By loading digital content onto their personal devices, the students are not limited to a specific location while accessing the lessons. They can watch them on the bus, at home, or even while waiting in the doctor's office. Making content available on DVD. By making content available in a DVD format, the teacher can reach students who may otherwise have limited access to the content. The probability that students have access to a DVD player is much higher. If students don't have access to a DVD player, loaners could be purchased as cheaply as $35 for normal DVD players and as cheaply as $60 for portable DVD players, which they can have their own screen. Class prep time. In cases where none of the other strategies are feasible, Using some class prep time for students to access digital content may be necessary. Giving students time on classroom computers or DVD players at the beginning of class to prep for the day's exercises would also overcome some of the access problems. But you may be asking, then why should I try this flip model at all? Well, the answer is simple. Differentiation and student-centered learning. My first implementation of the flipped classroom methods it didn't actually move any content outside of class. I use these strategies to clone myself so that
I use these strategies to clone myself while teaching computer forensics and computer game design. I implemented mastery learning and had students move through the curriculum at their own pace. With students at many different points in the curriculum, I found it benefited them greatly for me to create digital contents so that I could be everywhere at the same time. Students no longer had to wait for me to finish helping other students. The most difficult part of overcoming internet access problems is that the content will have to be created ahead of time. With a class website, the teacher can add content as they go. To create a framework that works for all students, it is suggested that the content library be created up front anyway. Otherwise, advanced students may run out of content and are waiting for updates. So when you're done capturing your video, you simply hit stop in Camtasia's screen recorder. If you are capturing a full screen capture, this tool doesn't come up on your screen. So you can just hit F10 to stop the recording. At that point, Camtasia will give you a preview of your video that you captured and you simply click Save and Edit. Save it as a temporary file. Then you will want to pick your dimensions before you start editing the video. For presentations where I've shrunk down the screen, I usually just go with blog or web. If you're capturing your full screen, however, you may want to go with YouTube and HD because it's a higher resolution and gives you more options to zoom and pan. So now you're ready to edit your video capture, which I'll go over in another training video, which will allow you to do things such as add pointy arrows, or zoom effects, and clip sections out of the timeline that you don't really want in the video. So that is how to capture a presentation using Camtasia Studio.